I'm just going to do it and get it done and move on. I'm going to end where, I'm going to start where I ended the last bit on my Facebook live session, which is the tragic gap that was introduced to me by a um, Quaker teacher from the US called Parker Palmer. And he introduced us to the concept of the tragic gap, and the tragic gap is to hold space or hold tension between what presently is and what possibly could be. I went to my own homecoming on Thursday night. I was invited by um, the, the Mankind Project, MKP. There were 38 men that went into the same initiation that I went into in October. And so I went to join and support and welcome them back into the space. And then it was there that I realized that we hold space for men that want to be better. And if you are curious to know why, what this is all about, you are welcome to be in touch. But it's, it's a tension between what you are now and what you possibly could be, um, known as the tragic gap presented to me through, a, through reading Park of J. Palmer. Um, it was in that session also that I realized that this, uh, all, all is not well So, with me because it was my own homecoming. I had missed, I had missed my homecoming and so this homecoming was my first and it was very, very quickly that I realized as the, as the guys received their awards there was one particular guy that, that just pressed buttons for me, a guy I know. I've subsequently reached out to him and I want to reconnect with him because it's what he said, the amount of violence that he used in his language and what he represents that I want to reconnect with. So the shadow, the bit that I want to bring out of the shadow into the light today is quite easy for me to do. It is clearly my anxiety. I have a fair amount of anxious moments this, mo this week that goes off the chart. So that speaks into my, the space of my mental health. It's just there lingering. And I very rarely act on it. One, one, one a, a recurring anxiety I don't know where it comes from, but I'm going to trust you enough to share it with you. The flat that we live in has got a door that is glass, big glass pane, so you can see through the, through the door. And every single time I walk home, I imagine there to be flames, fire, coming out of our flat. And of course, when I open it, there's nothing like it fire flames in my mind based on my anxiety and there's nothing I can do to get rid of it. There's, a, there's, flame, there's flames and fire all around. Everywhere I look, there's possibly things that could go wrong. That's the space that I'm in at the moment. I want to give you an update about my health while I'm talking about my men mental health. One thing that I started noticing, and it's actually even visible as I'm sitting here, is that I, when I look at people, I look at their size, because I've suddenly had a picture of, somebody took a picture of me and sent it to me, and I looked larger than life, and I probably mentioned it to you in a previous video. So I've, I've taken steps, physically, literally. Um, my walking has increased to running, and my running has increased to other exercise, to constantly be, and diet, diet, diet. So here's the deal. I have um, embraced the keto diet. So, um, my wife and I um, basically follow a keto where we've swapped out bad starch and carbs for protein. And um, we, we both are quite happy with the way things are settling. And of course, there's, there's um, meals 
that we can do that you know we, we plan we get the recipe books out and plan plan a meal in advance so that's great and um, so besides the diet, I've gone back to intermittent fasting, and, and this week has been good. I've just literally cut out two meals quite easily, breakfast and, and lunch. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I don't yet feel better outside, but inside I feel a shift. A shift has happened already. So I'm very grateful for that. That's my physical space. Um, I will chat to you about my the story of my tooth um, in another chapter. So I've shared with you my anxiety. Um, I, 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 I want to share another little bit to you of something that's coming up in this week, and that will give you a little bit of um, a little bit of. And I'll, I'll link it to to, to video stats. Um, I put a lot of effort into telling story visually constantly taking pictures constantly framing constantly thinking out words constantly rhyming writing thinking and then every now and again i just i don't know how you say this in, in english but in afrikaans i kreageer where i just do something i get i follow an impulse so i followed an impulse and it was my sister's birthday so i just took the top pictures from her facebook page and I put it into a TikTok template and I posted it. And I compare I compare the stats of that to the stats of my talking about life, my uh, uh, deep stuff. And if I were to compare my deep stuff to the impromptu light, easy stuff, it's, it's just incomparable. The stats on the light stuff is in the hundreds lots of people liking it lots of people sharing it like a semi-viral thing I've got to go and if those stats are to be believed do I stick with the deep or do I come up to the shallow I'm not going to try and answer that question now I'm just going to keep going on to the next point the actual point is that Thursday at 6 o'clock in the morning I have to be at the airport to say goodbye to my youngest sister. She doesn't often appear in my YouTube stuff. So I'm going to see if I can insert a little video of my youngest sister. She heads off to Uzbekistan to teach. She's been teaching in South Africa for the past 20 plus years and now has got an opportunity to go abroad. She goes by herself, which is a challenge. She goes into a country that not many people have been to, but she's excited and um, I support her in her excitement. Um, there is there's anxiety around that as well. Uh, for someone that has not traveled before, I hope that she, I know that she will fi figure it out. And there's no amount of advice giving whatever that one can do to deal with that. So that is the, that's the, the that's where we're going with this. Um, it's having, having to say farewell and I'm not excited about it there probably will be tears and and here's something that I I, I, I want to match with uh, there the are two concepts that I'm going to end off with they, they are partners the first is and I don't know what its name is but humans have lost the ability to empathically feel what other people are feeling um, and my best example of it is that um, we we rationalize first before we before anything else um, we, we, we just don't laugh because we see other people laugh we don't cry when we see other people cry and my best example of it is I've mentioned it before uh, doing comrades 
and you're always aiming for the the way of of least resistance when you're running so eventually you follow the guy in front of you and when the guy in front of you goes to the left you instinctively after being on the road for more than 50k 60k you start finding yourself just following the guy in front of you once your defenses are down you follow the guy in front of you and um, I'm puzzled by that because mainly our gearing as as humans is to do our own thing and then very much on a human level on a very very base level we have that instinct to just follow the hook in front of us I'm going to bring up my um, my last concept for the day and then I'm going to end off with an invocation uh, so Parker J. Palmer introduces me to a concept called the, tra- the, the tragic gap and the tragic gap is what I witnessed on at the homecoming a bunch of guys who now represent what they want to be as opposed to represent what they are and everyone behind every one of those guys is not only a whole litany of events positive and negative but there's generally a relationship with a, a guy who had been through the process before and was nudged and was was encouraged and was pushed and ever so gently brought into the space and that that whole process we call holding space holding space between what is and what could possibly be and the possibly be I'm going to suspend that for a little while because the space that I'm in is that I'm, made, I'm, I'm beginning to believe and I'm really struggling with this issue right now that maybe the space that Spencer finds himself in is the space that he finds himself in and maybe my view of his life is just my view. I'm going to hold my tragicness the tragicness of the view that I have of him I'm going to hold that prayerfully and for all the Spencers out there whether they are homeless whether they are whatever whatever they could be is up to them and up to God I am only but the conduit of that process It's the magician that I welcome today as I end with an invocation. I am reminded that part of me is a magician. And I'm reminded of it in the self. I welcome intuition, introspection, and going within to find the gifts of healing. The emotional path to the magician is through our fears we welcome that part of us which is the magician I welcome that part to me to Nathan that is the magician that, that is the magician you are welcome we end today by saying to you that we are again located at the Rhodes Cottage and um, It's a fantastic venue for hire and for reflection. You have yourselves a fantastic Sunday. Today we try something completely different. <coughs> I'm ending the vlog today much later in a very different place. So if I was having coffee in the coach house earlier, I'm having beer at the commons end of the day. I forgot to tell you a really, really important story that happened to me earlier today. While these um, pictures are coming at you, let this come at you as well. I have been farming and in my farming experiences I've been searching for 
old growth forests. Old growth forests is the place that the uh, Koreans go to get the cultures or the ferment to make their kimchi. And it, w when a friend of mine came back from Korea, I checked in with her and I said to her, am I, am I on the correct path in trying to get old growth forests in Cape Town? Why would I be searching for old growth forests in Cape Town? Why would I be searching for it? Should possibly be the answer. Well, it came to me. I didn't have to go anywhere to find the old growth forest. It came to me. I went to a friend who owns a farm in Newark. And even as I tell you the story, you won't believe how I felt when this happened to me. I normally buy compost from Chris. Chris is a farmer in Nurtuk, and there's a dead giveaway as to the, the location. Uh, there are two old farms in, in Nurtuk. I need someone to help me tell the story. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Whether you write, or whether you have a camera, or whether you have a, a phone, please help me tell the story. There are two old growth farms in our valley. The one is Brian Docker and Lowe. The other one is Chris. And I go to I go to Lowe and I buy compost from her and I buy it regularly. And I use her stuff to add to my stuff. I go to Chris as I normally do once or twice a month to go and buy his manures, pig, chicken, goat cow, the best manure you've ever found. And while I'm on his farm on Thursday, I see that there are boulders on the, on the site. He sold off half of the farm and there's project developers that are coming in. And while he's talking to me, I notice that the trees have got numbers. Now let me stop and say to you that the first thing that you need to know that is that I am taken by trees. When you speak to me in a forest, I'm not listening to you. Beneath the soil, I'm feeling the mycelial network, and above, I'm watching the canopy. So what you say to me is absolutely irrelevant, irata in the forest. When I see the numbers on the forest, then I ask questions. What? Why are the trees numbered? And then he said to me something I've never heard a farmer say to me before. On our farm, we've got the third oldest oak, white oak tree in the country. And before we can get our development pass, plans passed, we've got to have an environmental person sign off that we are going to care and look after these trees. And then my words to Chris was, please take me to these trees, to this tree. Hope you enjoy the rest of your week as you're inspired by my experience in the search for old growth forests in the deep south.